I hope that you are well. I wanted to put together a video that goes through the process that I use to make my stickers. I've had my Etsy store open for a couple of months now and at this point I think I've got my sticker making process down to a science and I wanted to share it with anyone who might be interested in making stickers of their own or is just interested in my process and I'm also going to be including a lot of helpful tips for troubleshooting issues with a silhouette and specifically using a silhouette with a Mac computer because I ran into a lot of issues myself and I'm going to share all of my solutions. So this video is specifically sharing my process for making these waterproof vinyl stickers. I will be making videos in the future where I talk more specifically about my process using Procreate, the um, illustration app that you can get on your iPad, as well as the process I use to make my sticker sheets that are also available in my Etsy store. So stay tuned for those if you are interested. Also, please let me know in the comments of this video if you're someone who's making stickers and you're struggling at all. I would love to try and help if I can because I have been there and I know that it's really disheartening at times to wrestle with all the new software and equipment. So I'm happy to try and help if I can. Okay, so without further ado, here is the tutorial. So the first and very crucial step in creating stickers is designing the stickers. So I use the app Procreate on my iPad Pro with my Apple Pencil to design my stickers, but you do not need an iPad to be able to do stickers in this way. It would work very well to just take a analog design and either do a photo or a scan and import that into whatever design software you're going to use like Photoshop or Illustrator. So if you are starting from Procreate, you're going to want to export your image to Photoshop. If you have an iPad and a Mac like I do, you can airdrop, which is a godsend. It makes life so easy. I initially thought when I filmed this clip that I would need it to be in PSD to work with in Photoshop, but you actually don't. A JPEG would be fine, but PSD is always a safe bet if you're going to work in Photoshop because it is a Photoshop file. Okay, so now I've got my design in Photoshop and what I want to do next is outline my design and get rid of the background that I don't need. What I'm going to do is make the outline on the outside and then expand it to create a bit of a border, but this will work just fine if you skip the expand steps to have just a outline right on the outside edge. So I'm going to find my magic wand tool. Make sure that if you're on one of the other types of tools that you just right click and that you're on the magic wand. And what I'm actually going to do is select the background behind my design. So the reason for doing this is that it gives you a much cleaner outline on the edges of your design rather than going in from the inside and picking out every single little piece one at a time with the magic wand. But with what I have selected right now, what I'm going to be working with is the pink that's on the outside of my design and I want to right now be working with a selection that's just around my image. So all you have to do to change this is hit Command Shift I and that inverts your selection. If I were to hit Command Shift I again, it's going to bring that dotted border back around the edges. So right now what's selected is between the border and the outside of the image. But if I hit Command Shift I and flip back and invert the selection again. It's just the inside of those dotted lines that's selected, which is what I want. So if you don't want a border around your image, you can just stop here and skip ahead to the part where we delete the background. But if you do want a bit of a border around the outside, we're going to go to select and then hit modify and then expand. And then in here, it's going to be kind of a trial and error to see how much of a border you want. I've figured out that 60 pixels gives me the amount of border I want for this particular design. So then the next step is just to kind of fine tune that selection and make sure that I'm happy with it because essentially what I'm going to do is just erase all of the pink that's around my selection and then what's left is going to be the sticker design that I copy a bunch of times and cut with my silhouette machine. So I'm going to go back into my little selection tools, but this time I want the quick selection tool. The default setting for the selection tools is to add, which is what I want. So just making sure I don't accidentally move it over to subtract, but subtract is useful if you add a little bit more than you want and you want to move it back. 
So I'm in add and then I'm just going to zoom in and find any little spots where there are little nooks and crannies and little corners that are going to be extra hard on my silhouette machine to cut and just kind of iron them out a little bit so that the silhouette machine is cutting as smooth of edges as possible just because the simpler the design that I give to silhouette the less likely I'm going to have any issues with it or weird like flaky bits coming off the stickers which I've dealt with before. Oh man, this little edge gave me so much trouble and I don't know why. It just did not want to look the way I wanted it to look. It just kept being like, pew, I'm going this way. But I ultimately did settle on something that was okay, but not perfect. Okay, so now I'm happy with the amount of smoothing and evening I've done with those edges. And the next step is just going to be to get rid of the excess pink that I don't want to be working with um, for the rest of my process. So now I have to go back to that command shift I function because that's going to, because right now it's selecting my design, but I want to go back to what's outside the design being selected. So. I hit command shift i it selects the outside of the design and then i just hit delete and it gets rid of all of the extra pink that i don't need okay so this design is ready to be formatted for printing and cutting so i had to find a workaround for the problem i was running into that silhouette studio was printing my designs as way lower quality than they actually were so my solution to this is doing the printing in Photoshop as opposed to Silhouette. But the tricky part is that you need your printed file to have registration marks that your Silhouette cutting machine will recognize. So what I did was figure out how to save a blank Silhouette file and then before I print any stickers that I wanna work with, I format them on the blank Silhouette file in Photoshop, print it from there, and then import that file into Silhouette Studio. I totally get how excessively complicated this sounds, but it was the best way I could figure out to make this work and I will walk you through all the steps if you're having the same problem. Okay, step one for saving this blank silhouette file is uh, not what you think and why it was tricky to figure out. You actually wanna go like you're going to print the file. So you just go file and then hit print. And then when this window pops up, just go ahead and hit print again. And then here, see on the bottom where it says PDF, you're gonna click on that menu and bring that down and then you have the option to save as a PDF. So this is how you're gonna be saving that blank page with the registration marks as a file you can work with in Photoshop. So just name it whatever you wanna name it. Um, I just called it like so it reg marks or something on mine. I'm not actually gonna save it right now cause I already have it, but this is what you do and you can choose where on your computer you save it. And then all you've got to do is take that file from wherever you've saved it and go into Photoshop and then open that file in Photoshop and you should see exactly what I'm seeing here. So now the goal is going to be to take that design we've been working with and move it over onto this blank silhouette file in whatever format you want it to come up on on the printed sheet of paper that your silhouette machine is going to cut. So you go back to that original file that you were working with. So I'm taking and dragging my planter and I'm just going to make sure I I'm using the move tool that's on the top left of the panel in Photoshop and then you just click and drag and hover over your other document the blank silhouette marks and it will bring it right in onto that document and then the next step is just to use Photoshop tools like transform and scale and then duplicating or copying your layers to move them around and get as many copies of that sticker on your sheet as you would want Okay, so the next step, now that I've got my nine stickers arranged on my sheet the way that I would like them to be, is that I'm just going to boost the vibrance a little bit because I find that when I print, things tend to look quite a bit more dull than they do on the screen because the screen has light behind it, whereas on paper, 
it's just reflecting off of the white paper. So I tend to boost the vibrance to the point where I think mm, that's a little bit too much. And then when they print, it usually ends up being the level that I'm happy with. You probably don't need me to remind you to make sure you save your work wherever you like to store it because it would really suck if you did all this and then you lost your file that you've been working so hard on. I have this system in place where I save all of my stickers every step of the way in a different folder. So right now I'm saving it both as a PSD if I want to come back in and work on it in Photoshop some more and also as a JPEG so that I can work on that file in Silhouette. So now the last step before I move over into working in Silhouette Studio is printing. And I'll just walk you through everything that I do to print in the best quality possible. So I will go in and um, make sure that I've, I'm not, if I'm gonna print more than one, that it's not set as two-sided. And then on my printer, I put my sticker paper in the rear tray. And then I found that high resolution paper for the media type works best for me and my printer, but yours might be different. And then just make sure quality is on best. And then it always tells me it's gonna be larger and clipping will occur and it never does. So I hope that yours doesn't clip either. Maybe my printer is just an angel and does it for me anyways. Okay, so hopefully your stickers have printed with no issues. If you are having issues with your printer, definitely leave it in the comments and I can try and help if I can because I dealt with a lot of printer issues myself. But the next most important thing is laying out your um, paper properly on your cutting board so that it will register the marks properly because I found being really precise about this does make a big difference. So I'm peeling it off to really make sure that the edges of your silhouette cutting mat should line up with an eight and a half by 11 piece of um, vinyl paper or whatever paper you're using and you really want to make sure it sits right in those edges um, That might sound silly, but it it can seem tempting to want to line it up with the um, lines beside but for an eight and a half by eleven sheet it should line up nicely just right on those edges So the next step or actually you could do this before you even stick your sticker sheet to the cutting mat. It doesn't matter what order you do these things in. You need to import your file that has your sticker designs on it into Silhouette so that you can tell Silhouette where you want it to cut. So make sure that you're using the same file that you just printed. You need what Silhouette is being given and what you just printed out from Photoshop to match exactly, otherwise the Silhouette won't be able to cut in the right place. So I've just imported the file and now I'm going to shrink it down to an appropriate size because for some reason when you import a large file JPEG into Silhouette Studio, it's like huge compared to the um, cutting mat that you are given to work with. So I'm just shrinking this down. I guess if you saved a smaller file, this wouldn't be as much of an issue, but doesn't matter. So then I go into page setup and make sure I turn on the registration marks in Silhouette Studio because I need to make sure that what I've just created as registration marks for my file lines up with the registration marks that Silhouette Studio would put on the page. So even though I'm not going to print from here and get the registration marks again, they just need to be lined up together because again, like I said, what Silhouette knows has to match what just came out of your printer that you worked with in Photoshop. So I hope that makes sense. They have to, they have to be lined up is the bottom line. You can use the arrows on your keyboard to really fine tune the movement. As long as you have selected your full page that you're working with, if you use your arrows, it will just move it around slightly to line it up. I haven't played around with exactly how precise I have to be. I usually just aim to be as precise as possible and I've never had any issues with, with cutting. So just, I'd recommend doing the same and you should be fine. Okay, so now that everything's lined up, the next step is to go to the trace panel. Sorry, that's cut off a little bit there, but it says trace panel. And then I'm gonna hit select trace area because we're going to um, select all of the items that we want Silhouette to make traces of for us. So you just cover everything where you're gonna be selecting. And I have the black box in the corner up there selected, which I don't need. So I'm gonna redo it again and make sure I don't have that. So you get 
all the way around the outside of all of your designs and then see how it only selects a little bit in the middle you're going to go in and change the threshold i find that 99% works like 99% of the time you can go up to 100 or go a little more or a little less but it doesn't really matter and then I find what works best is just hit trace outer edge or trace works fine too for everything I've done they both end up doing the same thing I'm not even really sure what the difference is but once you hit that you will get a red line that is going all the way around the outside of your image. It's unfortunately a bit hard to see here because my design is pink, but it should be quite clear on whatever you're working on as long as it's not also pink. So before going into this next step, it's really important to go in and make sure you click on the red line that was just created. Essentially, this is highlighting that trace line that you just made because what we want to do next is work with that line and unless it's clicked on, it's not going to work properly. So click on that red line and then go to the offset panel because what we're gonna do next is offset that line that we've already created. So normally I do an external offset when I do a sticker sheet where you have a bit of a border outside each of your stickers, but in this case, I actually wanna do an internal offset. And the reason for that is so that I can move the cut lines a little bit inside of the pink so that I don't get any excess white on the edges of my cuts, if that makes sense. So whether you're doing an internal or an external offset, you just kind of have to play around and figure out what distance works for what you want to do. In this case, I just want a very little bit of an offset so that it's just right on the inside of the pink and there's no risk of white kind of creeping in and being on the edges of the stickers. So I've got my cut lines and there's just one last step that I want to take to make sure my stickers are as clean as possible. This is a step you can skip if you're not as worried about it, but I just like, especially because I'm working with vinyl and it can get a little bit more flaky on the edges when you cut it, I want the lines to be as simple as possible. Although I should say that the silhouette is amazing at cutting really precisely, so it's not really that that's the issue. It's just wanting there not to be any jagged edges, and the straighter my lines are, the more likely there aren't going to be any jagged edges. So I'm just going to go into the edit points panel on the left side, and then one at a time I have to go through each of these internally offset traces and hit the simplify button at the top. And I found that for my purposes, all I needed to do was just hit simplify once and you can see it just gets rid of a bunch of the points that um, Silhouette put in for me to do the cut lines. And so it's basically just saying like, okay, to go around here, we're just going to not take as many stops and simplify the path. So it's going to be a less elaborate path that the cutting machine has to take. Now that I'm happy with the cutting lines that I've got in Silhouette, I'm just going to go into the Send panel to get it set up to send to the Silhouette to cut. So one of the trickiest things I've found about Silhouette Studio is that it has all of these pre-made settings for using pretty much any kind of material you can think of but I find that they aren't accurate. At least for me, most of the time they weren't deep enough, so I just had to kind of do trial and error over and over again to get the right cut from the machine. But luckily, the nice part was that if it's not cutting deep enough, all you have to do is just don't even take it out of the machine, just do it again until it goes deep enough, and then you can just save that setting so you know that that is what works for you. That is how I ended up with, I have a setting here that says Koala, that's the name of the brand of the vinyl I'm using, um, white vinyl, and I just saved that file and Silhouette keeps those settings for me for next time I want to use this material. So I'm all ready to go to hit send, but first the last step that you need to do before that is just position that cutting mat into the Silhouette machine. So I was having huge issues getting my silhouette to work and watched video after video and read blog post after tutorial after forever. And finally, I found one video. I wish I could remember what it was and I would um, give this person credit. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But someone mentioned that pointing a light at the silhouette can help make sure it can pick up the registration marks. and. I kept over and over having the silhouette tell me registration failed, registration failed, even though everything I thought was lined up great. 
and it was that it needed this light. So I grabbed this lamp that I wasn't really using and just set it up beside my portrait and I always have it on whenever I'm using it and I have never had it once tell me registration failed since then. So if you're having that problem, try a light while you're cutting. Let me know if that helped. I hope that that tip is helpful to you like it was for me. So the next task is lining up your cutting mat properly because this was another thing that I kept having issues with and it wouldn't cut because I wasn't lining it up right. But um, I found that the secret magic trick that always works is making sure that little white wheel is lined up with the number eight on your cutting mat. Unfortunately, this will probably not be helpful to someone who has a different model of silhouette machine. But if you also have a silhouette portrait three, this trick always works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, just keep experimenting and I'm sure that you will find the sweet spot that works with your silhouette. The combination of the light and finding that spot was what has made my machine work reliably every time. It's time for the moment of truth to see whether the silhouette really cut through like it was supposed to and I'm not really surprised that mine did here because as you can see on the left side I already did two sets just like this earlier but if you were trying out a new type of paper or this is your first time using your silhouette, you may have found you needed to do it a few times to mess around with the settings and find the right ones for you and your material and your silhouette. When it comes time to remove your stickers from your cutting mat, I've found that with certain things, it's really important to use like a spatula but with these ones i was finding it was honestly just the easiest to just peel them off with my fingers because they were small enough um but what notice the way that i'm pulling it off i'm making sure that the it's the sheet behind that's bending and not the sticker because this helps to make sure that like your final product that you are pulling off doesn't get really bent in the process they do get bent a little bit but this vinyl was easy enough to flatten back out it's especially problematic with um, like paper sticker sheets or other paper products that you don't want them to get bent in the process of taking them off the silhouette mat. So a good rule of thumb is if something has to bend, let it be the silhouette mat and not your product. So here's the little batch of stickers I ended up with. I hope that if you were following along and making your own stickers that yours turned out good too. If any of these little cutie planters speak to you, you can find them on my Etsy store. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you at all in any way, it would mean a lot if you could leave a little thumbs up for me. And if you have any questions or further concerns or issues that you're dealing with, please leave them in the comments. Like I said in the intro, I am more than happy to try and help if I can. Take good care, friends, and I'll see you soon.